All right, guys, touch cover here again today, and the roster mania transfer window, I suppose we should call it, is open as of today. So, as of this announcement that went up on Reddit a couple of weeks ago from people at Activision Blizzard talking about how the CDL is going to run, going to start in you know 2020. This was a um, a little line in that in that post they did. So, an open signing window for all pro players begins September the third, 2019. This means that any player may negotiate negotiate and sign a new contract with any team in the league at this time. So I think it was also announced in this that a week before today, teams that were already involved in the CWL last year could start having having contact. But of course, most organizations are from outside Call of Duty, um, you know, traditional Call of Duty. So this is the situation. The roster mania period, I guess, officially starts today. Of course, there's been rumors so far, but as of now, as of this very moment, as of when you guys are watching this video, players can be signed and traded and bought out and, you know, just picked up being unrestricted free agents onto any team in the CDL next year. So the last day hasn't particularly brought so many more new rumours and the like, but there are plenty of new stories to talk through today and some interesting things to discuss. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Like if you do subscribe if you're new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. And moving onwards, we have this to follow up from yesterday's story regarding, I think it's called Bad Moon, um, yeah, Bad Moon Agents, or Bad Moon Talent, I think is the one, which is the uh, organisation at Facento and Andrew Drake, formerly of Activision Blizzard MLG, um, have started up. A talent agency as far as I understand it. It's also kind of like player management. A little bit interesting. But anyway, Fair Play Esports' Ryan Fairchild tweets this out yesterday. Before COD Pros start using agents, a few questions. Is the agent registered? Can the agent provide value relative to the percentage earned? What is the What does the player want from the relationship? Many esports pros want agents because of sports, but don't analyze it whether it's worth it or proper. Interesting comments here, and something I didn't really go into in detail yesterday, and Sir Scoots, of course, an esports legend, says the following as well, lawyer up before you agent up, and, um, you know, in pretty much in regard to this uh, bad moon talent situation that Facento started up in Call of Duty, all this kind of kicked off yesterday, so Adam Fitch, UK esports reporter of the year, says this, it's about time Call of Duty players got themselves management, though I'd personally prefer it to have been those with experience in that line of work. This appears to be another case of Call of Duty players keeping their friends around. And this is a great point, I think, by Adam, which um, I didn't really consider at the time. I didn't think of it in this light, but it obviously is what's going on. As I mentioned, Facento, Mudog, Enable, and Jcap are known as the Oak Boys, if you follow um, you know, Call of Duty Twitter, basically. And the only one of those that is now not associated, or not yet associated, with Bad Moon talent is Mudog. All the other guys, Facento is a COO and the other two guys Jacob and Enable have signed on to be part of the talent so um, ob obviously that's interesting right because there's no way that would be the case if they weren't friends before maybe it's a good decision but we know how Call of Duty has worked in the past friendships rule above all else and um, you know it's not a good idea to make your agent you know your friend and Adam says the following as well a simple search suggests they're not even registered as a talent agency not sure how simple this search actually is to do um, but yeah apparently this this is, this is what Adam reckons. He obviously knows how to look these kind of things up and suggests that they're not actually registered yet. So just to follow on from that story from yesterday, because it was a pretty interesting one, and I'm sure you guys will have some thoughts on it down in the comment section below. I think the point really on, um, you know, keep people keeping their friends around in Call of Duty has been something that's uh, happened since the dawn of time. And, um, you know, whether it will continue to happen to the same degree with franchising, maybe not. But of course, with this bad mood talent situation, slightly separate from franchising, it's definitely still on the table. Moving onwards then, we have this from the Gaming Revolution, a guy who's done a lot of leaks related to um, Modern Warfare, this year's game. So he gets asked a question, do we know what servers we'll be playing on? As Black Ops 4 was poor at 30 hertz in customs and 60 hertz in pubs, he says they're aiming for 60 hertz in both. Now, this is a really, really big deal. Back in Infinite Warfare, the game in custom games was horrible because at the start of the game, we were playing on 10 hertz, which means that the game will up update 
the position of the players and the anything that's going on on the map it will update that once every 0.1 seconds which is doesn't sound very long but that's a lot of time um 60 hertz is a reasonable amount of time that means it's updating 60 times a second in infinite warfare you would get a lot of situations where you would get cameraed very hard because someone would come around the corner on their screen no problem at all but the thing is for you the game wouldn't have updated yet because it was updating every 0.1 seconds therefore they they came around the corner just um, after one of the ticks had been and therefore you didn't see them for like another 0.1 seconds they kill you no problem at all they come around the corner way later than they actually did if you increase the hertz, you reduce the issues where that happens. So um, aiming for 60 is a really big deal because in the past we've had like 10 hertz, 20 hertz, 30 hertz in custom games, which is not great for keeping the game as competitive as possible. It gives a lot of advantages, allows you to camera people a lot, allows uh, the person coming around the corner give a big peek as advantage if you get lucky with how the ticks are lining up, which is um, it's just randomness you don't want in the game. If they can get 60 hertz, as um, is pretty much standard, then we're talking and we, we could have a really good competitive experience just another factor that hertz rate which um, impacts the game which you don't want to see so 60 hertz would be great just to explain that for you guys if you weren't aware maniacs is the following optic maniac don't of course know how much he knows and a lot of the other optic guys know about the situation behind the scenes but this is what he says just a few minutes ago damn so this cod league next year is about to not have a phase 100t or hector's optic prayers so um you know i don't know how much he knows 100 thieves are definitely out Phase, we don't know if they are out. Maybe Maniac knows more than us, who knows? Thought I'd bring these to your guys' attention. Or Hector's Optic. So we pretty much know that Hector isn't going to be working with Optic next year. Whether this also implies that Hector may not be working with anyone else, who knows? I don't really reckon Maniac knows too much about that situation, but just to bring this to your guys' attention, maybe he knows a little bit more about FaZe than we do, but I doubt it somehow. I just thought I'd bring this up because it's kind of interesting. Moving onwards then, Bryce says the following a couple of days ago, you know what I really want? A well-done documentary that goes behind the scenes of all the franchises. The names, the setups going on in the stories as the year progresses of triumphs and mistakes. I mean, there's like 30 million just for buy -ins. Get me a documentary. One thing I'd kind of like to see, and I'm, I'm hopefully will maybe have the opportunity to work on it. It's going to be difficult to have any time to do it, um, but it would be nice to work on some sort of documentary style stuff for the history of Call of Duty, um, content at least along those lines that you know we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. It also would be nice to have some content on how to get into Call of Duty Esports, explaining how the game modes work and these sort of things. So if you guys want to take up a little, um, you know, fall, autumn project, whatever, and uh, start working on something like that, maybe hit me up in the DMs if you have any ideas, then maybe we can get something going. Very difficult for me to find time because I'm making a video a day and working full time. We'll have to see. Uh, but something like that would be really cool, I think. So, um, yeah, just thought I'd run that past you guys and uh, see what Bryce thought there. Skies says the following, today shall be wild. Who knows if this is actually related to um, anything franchise related i don't know if he has anything planned behind the scenes but of course this is 3rd of september so maybe just talking about the fact that the uh, the transfer window is now open this came out yesterday from k2 midnight ceo finally the shocking true story of midnight gaming and midnight esports and the part that was played by adam and mlg will soon be made public this is kind of exciting stuff because um earlier on in the season we had all that midnight controversy where the players on Midnight didn't want to play for them anymore. Midnight apparently were trying to sign them to really hefty like three-year contracts so that um, they could sell them on for a lot of money when franchising came around. The players didn't want to do it. The team had to split up as a result of, of the issues. Um, probably there was some fault lay at Midnight side and also at the players side. Who knows? And um, what well, Midnight is what K2, the CEO, is trying to suggest is that Adam had some role to play here. Will be interesting to see how this develops. Moving onwards, Clayster says this. Open signing period starts tomorrow and i'm sitting here in the dark fantastic stuff lads parasite says this is a superstars world vets are just living in it speak for yourself christopher kind of implying that um you know he jokingly still considers himself a superstar or he implies that maybe his original tweet isn't um, necessarily the full truth but still, um, if this is the case and he has no idea what's going on with the United and he has no idea whether he's going to stay with the United, maybe they're partnering up for a Houston spot with this Lee Zyben guy, who knows what's going on. Thought I'd bring that to your guys' attention. Um, also, the following comes out from Kismet. Thought this was a great point. 
That's what I've been preaching. I hate how out of the loop players are. All the past years, things I loved about COD was the fate was in your hands. Well, now it's mainly in the hands of people we don't even talk, know how to contact. Everyone is just about in the dark about it all. It's quite interesting seeing players on Twitter go like, um, oh, bro, do, do you want a team or whatever? In previous seasons, players actually had a choice. They could be like, oh, you know, we'll, uh, behind the scenes conversations, we'll pick up this guy, pick up this guy, build this team of five. Then we'll go to an organization and, um, you know, they'll buy us because we're a great team. This year, not quite, doesn't quite work like that. The franchises have way more power. Yes, players can be like, oh yeah, okay, I want a team with you this season, want a team with you. Maybe have like a team of three that really want a team together that you can then try and go to an organization and a franchise and get in. But it's very unlikely that teams are going to be able to be like, okay, this is our five going into next season. Come to a franchise and they'll pick us up. They'll be like, why would we want you? We want um, XYZ player. We want Scump. We want Sensor. We want Aches. We want a big name, big following, um, whatever. So it's very much dependent. Depending on the franchise this year, the players have uh, not very much power, which is, of course, very interesting. Two big free agency announcements here. Looney, I'm a restricted free agent heading into next season. A lot of people thought that on this Spice team they were going to build around Looney, considering Hook's gone back to Envy. Um, Temp was announced as a restricted free agent as well. They've already brought Marky B back on the um, as a strategic coach. So Looney's a restricted free agent, which means he's going to be going elsewhere. Similar story here for UYU Methods. Unrestricted free agent, though, from UYU. So obviously just signed a contract until the end of the season, which is ideal for him because uh, these restricted free agents are a little bit difficult for a lot of the uh, the franchises to pick up these guys. A lot of contract kefuddling, as we talked about yesterday. Uh, the Minnesota guys said that they had an issue where, well, not necessarily an issue, but if they want to pick up someone as a restricted free agent from a organization that was in the CWL last season, then that organization can be like, hmm, we'll give it a week to think about whether we actually want to uh, match that offer or not, which means being an unrestricted free agent is a bit of an advantage. Finally, before we end the video, I wanted to share you guys with you guys this clip from, um, you know, Nameless and TJ and that discussing players who overbait. Thought I'd just share it with you guys. Didn't want to uh, give too much commentary on it, but they go through a few players like Scraps, Brack, Dashy, Scump, and, and you know, Decimate and, um, and the like. Thought this was an interesting little bit of a discussion point that you guys may be interested to, to comment on down in the comment section below because interesting answer, of course. Now, Dashi and Scump won championships this year. There's other players you can consider to be baiters. Um, probably the biggest one I saw a whole year was uh, Robbie B. I don't know if you remember when he um, when he came in as a substitute for fastballer um, with an SMG, played incredibly slow and baited his guys all the time, had good stats. Um, he had something like a 1.3 at the Pro League qualifier, but they uh, they didn't win a series or something. So that kind of shows, um, shows the kind of way he was playing, in my opinion. Uh, maybe that's unfair. But yeah, the, the kind of names he mentions here are interesting because... Because even hearing, you know, listening to Rated, who didn't have the best relationship with Scraps throughout this season, he said that Scraps is just the best player at getting kills in the game. He didn't say, you know, Scraps was on his team, and then they had a, uh, an unharmonious split from each other on that team. And Rated was saying that, you know, Scraps just gets kills well. You can't complain about his playstyle. That's just the way that it works best. Um, which is interesting, of course, because you'd have thought that in that situation, if Scraps indeed was overbaiting, as uh, a lot of these guys suggest, then maybe that was would have been the time to say it. So be interested to hear your thoughts on this. Um, I'll just leave the uh, leave the video to play out as we finish off the video. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new as always. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I will see you next time. Oh, That's it? Bottom <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, someone clipped it. <laughs> Scraps, Brack, uh... Dashy. Yep, Dashy. They all, all three of those guys overbait. Um, <laughs> there's also sub players that overbait. There's also sub players that overbait as well that we should probably talk about. Like who, like who, like who? Scump overbaits. Um, who else? Let's see. Decimate by a mile. That guy's way Decimate. too big of a baiter. Um, um, Nato. Nato doesn't bait. Nato's a baiter. No, he's not. That's Cap. Uh, Jenny. A baiter is someone that baits. No. Nah, Zinni's king premium. No, nah, Zinni, like, but you know he's not gonna run in front of you. You know what I mean? Like, it's not. Yeah. Like... Dude, 